Another week, another animal, and this time we're staying with the theme of strange names, but finally moving away from insects and onto insects of the oceans, crustaceans. I know they're not really the insects of the oceans, but they are arthropods and it makes for a good analogy. So this week's crustacean is yeti crabs, a genus of decapods known as kiwa, named after the Polynesian guardian of the sea. Some sources say kiwa was the goddess of shellfish, however others dispute this and say it was the guardian. They are not true crabs as they belong to the infraorder Anomura and not Brachiura. And they are not yetis as those live in mountains and not at the bottom of the oceans, and of course there is a very 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 slight chance that yetis don't exist. The yeti in the name clearly comes from their yeti-like bristles on their arms and legs. There are four known species of yeti crabs, each inhabiting similar areas around the globe. Kiwa hirsuta is found along the Pacific Antarctic Ridge in the South Pacific Sea. Tyleri is located around the East Scotia Ridge near the Drake Passage and the Antarctic Peninsula. Arone is found in the Australian Antarctic Ridge. And finally, Puravida is located on the East Pacific Ocean around cold seeps on the ocean floor. Now you may notice that all but one yeti crab species are found along tectonic plate boundaries where there is a lot of volcanic activity. Activity. This is because the tectonic activity creates hydrothermal vents which they need for their survival. The only one that doesn't live near one of these hydrothermal vents does live around cold seeps which despite not being near plate boundaries are still caused by tectonic activity and are similar to hydrothermal vents in that they also release minerals and nutrients into the ocean around them. Due to the rather small area the yeti crabs can inhabit you will find hundreds of them all crowded around the vents for not only the nutrients they give off but also the warmth as they cannot survive in the cold barren expanse of the ocean floor. The hydrothermal vents are crucial to their survival, as they live in the barren ocean floors with not much in the way of nutrients. The hydrothermal vents and cold seeps release nutrients and minerals into the water around them and warm up their surroundings. This encourages the growth of bacteria in the area, and they form the base of the food chain around the vents. Some animals that live in these vents will simply catch microorganisms to feed on, but yeti crabs take it one step further. Their hairy arms and legs not only capture the bacteria, but allow for it to grow and multiply on the crab's bristles. The crabs have been observed waving their arms around to capture more bacteria and to encourage growth on its body by exposing it to more minerals from the vents. The crabs then eat the bacteria off themselves once they have sufficiently grown their stocks. Essentially these crabs are farmers. They have also been known to feed on other small animals around the vents but the majority of their diet comes from their bacteria farms. The ocean floor is completely devoid of light at the depths the yeti crabs dwell, and so it's hard for them to find mates. This is why it is thought that the bristles may not just be for capturing and growing food, but they also might be sensors for scavenging and locating a mate. Not much is known about the breeding process of these animals, probably due to how incredibly hard it is to study them on the ocean floor. We do know that the females have eggs and the males have testes, and that the females seem to prefer colder water to males, living further out from the vents, which may have something to do with keeping their eggs at the right temperatures. Well obviously their yeti fur is a great adaptation, increasing surface area to grow bacteria and to capture microorganisms and nutrients. They also might act as sensors to find mates and scavenge food. The actual claws on the crabs also support the idea that crabs not only farm but also hunt or scavenge, as they are incredibly well developed and very sharp, which would be a complete waste if they are not used for something. The hairs on their claws are thought to have yet another use. The materials that come out from the vents and cold seeps are incredibly toxic to most organisms, but clearly not the bacteria the yeti crabs feed on. It is theorised that the crabs not only grow the bacteria to eat, but also to make use of how they detoxify the water around them, keeping the yeti crabs from being poisoned by the very vents that keep them alive. So little is known of these creatures that we don't have any sort of estimate for their population size or trend. There could be millions of them or only 10,000. It is likely there are a lot of them due to the sheer concentration of them that are found around ocean vents, but again we don't know how many ocean vents there are. They were only discovered in 2005, so there may be far more than four species. The good thing is that because they live at such depths in isolation, it is unlikely that humans will have any effect on them. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it and if you'd like to see more from us.